Okay, welcome everybody to today's lesson. So we will be going through week lesson two and we'll be fast enough today. I believe you were able to try out the codes for, for the previous weeks. And if you have any question, we'll be so happy to answer your questions on Discord or on, on the WeChat group. So I'll be going straight into the lesson. Option presents this, and it's not gonna make you a software engineer, but I mean, we're working on Scripto Zombie. We're now on lesson two. And my name is Emeko Koe, so let's go straight into it. And then, um, So let's go back to lesson one anyway. So as we are doing this, you can actually send your questions here. Okay. So last week we were able to do one or two things. We were able to create a zombie. And um, you learned how to use modulus operation to do some task. And Ben was able to share some some stuffs about it. Am I loud enough? Hello, Ben, can you hear me well? Okay. Yep, you sound so, good. Yeah, so let's let's just get a, a, a P of what it looks, what it looked like last week. But I think before we move on. So we're able to create a zombie and uh, System is so slow. Okay, we're able to create a smart contract. I mean, create a contract called Zombie Factory. So it has this state variable, okay? DNA DGs, DNA modules, and it has a stroid zombie. And we made an array of, of um, stroids, that zombie stroid, okay? We made it public, public visibility. And we created a function, okay? So these functions, uh, one of them is this, the create random zombie function. It takes a string. So it means it's public. Anybody can call it, takes in a string. Okay, generates a DNA with a string. Okay, so this is gonna call this function, right? And it will use this string to generate a random number. Okay, it's gonna generate a random number here. So what this does is, is it hashes um, whatever um, stuff that is given to it, but you know you need to convert it to to byte. So, and from there we type cast whatever is here into this, and then using the modulus operation we we return a DNA. So, and I remember no no other person can call this contract. You can, and this is of private visibility, meaning an external contract cannot call this. Um, only our contract can call it and. Also, this. That being said, um, let's go over to fourteen. Just so this is just a brief overview of what we did last week. So, so um, this is just you don't really need to know this, okay? But just because we're going to still treat it. This is Web three. So Web three dot js is um, a JavaScript uh, library that is used to communicate with smart contract, okay? So it looks a little bit like um, it's like the, it's 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 like what um, is like a bridge between the front end and the back end. Okay, so when you want to assess a a smart contract, you need the smart contracts ABI. We get to know that, and then you need the smart contracts um, contract address. Okay, so what this library does is that you know web three dot it dot contract it gets the ABI. Okay. And in, in, it initializes it here. And then it gets the control address and then uses this and does like contract dot at address. You get to understand it later, but just I want to spend like two or three minutes so that in case there are other um, high level students, they can continue with that. So 
you can see actually here it gets both the ABI and the contract address. Okay, so with this with this zombie factory, we can now assess the smart contract. So let's say you want to call the um, generate zombie function. You can just do zombie. Okay, okay, here zombie. Okay, dot create random zombie and you put in a name. So you can call the smart contract. Um, because um, this already, you know, this zombie factory variable has somehow, somehow they've merged everything, both the ABI and the contract address. It's very easy anyway. When we get there, you understand it better. But just for in case there are other transcendents, like I said. So when you look at this, you see that this is just JS, okay, like we learned. So when the user clicks a function, okay, it's going it's to call this create random zombie. Um, our create random zombie function, okay, and so on and so forth. Just basically all the same, okay. And um, we now rush into that. So today we want to go and dive into lesson two. And um, you can use this button. I don't know why mine is not working. Probably because I've done the lesson a long time. So in this lesson, we will be learning how to feed on zombies. Okay, so we'll make a, if I, we're gonna learn a lot this time. So I will fast also. In this lesson, we'll be feeding our zombies, okay? In the sense that this zombie, we feed on this other zombie, and then we have a new zombie. That's a new mutated zombie. Um, so let's dive into it. So you will be learning how to, interact with some other contract elsewhere, okay? How to, you know, make the, I mean, your code a bit readable by kind of, um, kind of reducing the volume and, and all that. So chapter number two. Yeah, so let's go over to mapping an address. Um, the last time we, we talked about Stroit, okay? And um, we noticed something, we can use it like a database, but there's another one called mapping, or rather mappings. So mapping is um, used to store, it's like, um, I don't know, it, it looks somehow like dictionary in, in Python. It gives you a key value store, you know? It's, it's, uh, a mapping is essential, it's essentially a key value store for storing a, and looking up data. So what it does is that, um, let's take for instance this, okay? You wanna store an account balance. I mean, almost everybody use mapping, it's very important. Okay, let's say this is a die account, okay? So this is, this map gives, um, this map is um, the account balance map, okay? So what it does is that it takes in a user's address and keys in, the value that this is the key and this is the value. And so when you want to check your um, balance, so it automatically it automatically gives it automatically points to your address and then produces this value. And I'm, I'm not so clear on that, but when we do it, you will see what I mean. So now let's get straight to to mapping. So mapping actually give us a, gives us a key value, you know, um, database storage. Um, here we want to make a map of zombie to owner. So we want to um, map every zombie because you remember in this very thing we created, okay, for every zombie, we gave it a, a, an ID, okay? So we want to know the owner of each zombie, okay? So how are we gonna do it? So that, you know, um, immediately we search for an ID, we know the owner of that zombie. So mapping can actually help us to do this. And here it says create a mapping called zombie dot, called um, zombie dot owner. But before we go over there, let's, let's look at how it goes. So you write mapping, then you put in the key. This will be the key, the address will be the key, and then the value, okay? So in other words, when you want to, in other words, okay, this is another one, user ID to name, okay? So 
you put in the key, this will be the key. That's a unit 265, and it's going to map to a string. Now let's build what they ask. They say create a mapping called zombie to owner. And then let's create a mapping called zombie to owner. So what does it take in? The key will be a unit. So we say unit. And then um, give it this thing. And um, is the value is going to be an address. Address. Remember, so Michael. Okay. So what this happens? I mean, what happens is that for every user, okay, we, when we create this zombie ID, we try to map the ID of the zombie to the owner. That's to address. Okay. And you remember, you you can get the color of the smart contract by using the global variable called message does sender. So actually, um, this smart contract can be in the, I mean, on the blockchain, okay, forever, except if it is not called, you know, nothing happens. So somebody is gonna call it. Okay, that person can be grabbed using this global variable message does sender. And another thing to note is that um, an individual that's a user can call this, can call our smart contract or a contract can also call another contract. Okay, so we'll be seeing that. So now we've done the first step and they, I'm sorry, and they say, let's make this map in public. Good, so let's make it public. Okay, so on making it public, something happens. Um, you can see that this is like part of a state. It becomes like a kind of a state um, variable, okay? So making it public um, gives it a getter function, a getter function in the sense that um, if anybody can call it. So it's like, a, it gives us like a free function. So we can call this function. You, you're gonna see how to call it in just a minute, okay? So then they ask us to create another mapping called zombie dot owner zombie count. So this, this is gonna keep the record of the zombie count. So let's write it very easy, mapping. Remember it is in a key value stuff. So what's the key address? What's the, what is the key, the unit? Are we gonna make it public? No, just give it the name on a zombie. Remember your semicolon, okay? And that's that for this. And I, I guess what they want us to do here is to probably, when we create a zombie, probably here, when we create a zombie, okay? Probably they might want us to, to add, you know, to put it on the database that's to use this mapping. So we might do something like, anyway, let's let's continue with the lessons and see what they have. So this is basically how to create a map, um, which is a key value stuff. So when you call something like this, when you call a function zombie owner and you key in the value, okay? Let's say, let's say ID seven, okay, three. Okay, it's gonna give you the address of, so it's gonna, this is gonna return, let's say you call this, okay. This is gonna return an address of, of um, user ID of zombie with the ID of number three. And I've, I've messed up with here a little bit, so probably the answers may not come up immediately. So, oh. so let's move. Okay, here they talked about message or sender. 
that's very good. We've, we've talked about this. Message the sender is one of the many global variable. Mm. So you can know more about these things by going to solidity.org. Let's global variable. I think I say sheet five for this program. Say sheet. Okay, but you can type in anything. Okay, this this is what I'm looking. Okay, yeah. So, so you can know more about global variables here. I mean, this is like a sheet um, sheet, so you can know a lot of things just by going here. So you can see we have lots of them, and um, one of them is message just send. You know, block dot number. Okay, so block dot number gives you the current block number. We we'll get to use some of these things later. Revert is used to abort an execution and reverse state changes. Um, let me just be clear again so that you understand what we mean by global variable. Global variable means a variable you can call anywhere on the smart contract, okay? Um, then we have what we call the state variables. The state variables are these variables you've had coded. Okay, and then we have the local variables. Local variables are what you called inside a function, like the variable you called inside a function, like this. This um, ID is a global variable because it's not stated outside of the function. So anything that is not inside a function, inside a function is a state variable. And the, the variable you called inside a function is a local variable. And then the ones that have global use are the global variables which we've been able to see a little of them here. So back to where we are. So here, they give us an example. Let's look at what they did. Let's follow this example. So this is a map and they, they, this contract is gonna take a favorite number, okay? So here, it makes a map called favorite number. And then the key is an address and the value is going to be a unit 256. So what it does is that when a user, okay, let's say calls this function, you can see what's this function. This function is set my number function and it's a public function. That means anybody can call it, right? So when you call this function with a number, okay, and you know, of type unit, you just call a number, it's going to type cast this. And so what it's going to do is that it's going to, it's going to map this, it's going to map the message or send okay it's going to map this number you've um, keyed in into this message or sender i don't know if, if it is um, clear enough it's going to i mean this is going to be the key okay that means anytime you call this um anytime you call um the favorite number with this key okay it's going to give you this value so what is my number this is another function okay this is actually what you use to set the map. And then this other function helps you to see what you've done. So how, how does it go? A user can call this function, we know, right? And this function returns um, a value. So what does it do? What is my number? So when you say, what is my number? And you call this function, what it's going, it's going to do is, is that it's going to, it's gonna search this map, key, key in the uh, message, uh, I mean the user or the caller's ID, that's the caller's user address into this path and gives him the number he or she has already stored, okay? So this is like the key, okay? So it's gonna give you the value you've stored. Let's say you call this function with 53, okay? You as the message the sender, as you are the one that called it, when you hit this other function, is going to return that 53 to you. Okay, clear. Mm. Okay, so let's see what they have here. They said, let's update our query zombie method. What do they want us to do? Okay, want us to update it. So why should we update it? You know, we created a zombie, you know, 
We didn't even map it to any user. You know, we don't know who owns what. So it's, it's incomplete. We are still building something. We created a zombie with this ID, okay? We, 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 we created a zombie um, from here, sorry. And then it called generate, it generated a DNA and then it created a zombie for us, right? But I mean, it's incomplete. We need to know who owns what. So here they are trying to make it complete. So they say first, we, after we get back to the new zombies ID, let's update our zombie to owner mapping to store. Okay, very good. So we want to know who, who, who owns what. So what do we do? Call the zombie to owner. Very good. And then ID. So this is just trying to say, taking this value and use this key to locate it, okay? Very easy. So with this, we are, we, with this, we've allocated this, um, this zombie belongs to, that's this zombie, this um, zombie belongs to this very user. So it's gonna be stored on, on the blockchain. It's going to be sold in this uh, mapping mapping code. Huh? Yeah, it's going to be stored in here. So I want you to see something. Take note of what's happening. So you put in the zombie, okay? And then you put in the key. Oh, something is wrong. Sorry. Let me read this here. After we get back to the new zombies ID, let's update our zombie mapping to store. Okay. You see, I made a mistake here. So this is supposed to store the ID. You can say this is a unit. So it's gonna the key is gonna be a an ID and the value is gonna be an address, which is the message that's sender. So that's 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 um normal. So in other words, when we call this key. Okay, when we call this and this mapping with this key, we're gonna get the person that's, that owns this zombie. And then second, let's increase, let's increase the zombie count, okay? So probably the, some people might have more than one zombie, okay? So let's increment the count. And this is also true to maybe if you're building like a, 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 a financial DAP, okay? Um, you can decide to, you know, you maybe here you map the user. You um you might decide to create um a map, okay, where whenever you key in a user's address, it gives the number of coin or token the person has. So kind of more or less the same thing. Okay. So let's call this have to be fast now. And then we update it. And you see address, so this is gonna, the key is gonna be an address. And in this sense, it's gonna be the user message that's sent them. Okay. So we just wanna increase it like when this function, when um, this variable is created, this, this one is, this mapping is made, okay? And this is also made. So we want to just increase it by one. You remember JavaScript, you just do plus plus, or you can decide to do plus, plus equal to, I think this is plus equal to one, okay? Or this is, um, if you know JavaScript, this is, or you can decide to, if it is too, too much for you, let's do it this way. Plus one. So it means getting this person, okay? getting the, the value. Actually, you know, this is the first time we're storing it. So it's gonna have like zero, okay? So it's gonna be zero plus one is one. So it's gonna make it to be one. But I think in this lesson, they just want us to use plus plus. Mm, okay, here, yeah. I said they just want us to use plus plus. So this is basic JavaScript, let's move on. So what did we do here? We try to attach 
we attach, uh, try to make a, a, a map called zombie to owner, okay? So whenever we key in this, um, the zombie ID, we get whoever owns it, okay? That's the message of sender, because um, this message of sender is gonna be triggered with the person that called this contract, okay? So um, this when this ID is created, when this zombie is created, the ID is created, and then this ID is mapped to, the, to this message of sender. And then the, and then what happens still is that they increase the, the zombie count, okay? So maybe if this person hits this function again, the count is going to increase to two. So when we query this uh, map, okay, let's say this person has three zombies. When we query this map with the, um, with the key address, that's the address of the user, we're going to have um, the value of three is going to be returned to us. So semicolon. Mm. Is there any other thing? Okay, so yeah. Mm. Four. So we're going to require, going to require. Okay, so um, when you look at this, you see that, why do we need require? You might need require to modify your, your function, okay? Let's say this is a public function. Okay, this, yeah, this is a public function. That means anybody can call it. But you can put in some restrictions. You can say, oh, um, this function is only going to be called by so, 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 and so person, okay? Or anybody that calls this function must have at least 50 USD, uh, USDC. You get it. So those are the things um, we can use function for. It's kind of used to modify or condition our our any function. So here they give an example. Okay, this example says function. Um, okay, say hi to Vita like. Okay, so this function is going to be is going to take in a name variable. I mean, yeah. It's going to take a name as a parameter and it's going to be of type string. And then it's going to return a string. So what does this function do when you call it? Okay, whatever name you put in, it tries to compare it, okay, to this name, Vita like. In other words, if you don't put in Vita like, it's not going to run, okay, because of this required function. Okay, let's put it here. So whatever, so when you call this function, anybody can call it because it's public, right? But this, this there's gonna be a restriction here, okay? If whatever you put in, like if what you put in is not equal to this, it's not equal to beta like, it's gonna, it's not gonna run, okay? It's gonna throw an error. Okay, so why do we have to put all this? Actually, um, in um, thinking Solidity, they don't really compare string with string, okay? You need to you need to hash it. If it is um, not, um, address, you can compare, but for string, you need to, you know, do what we did, you hash. And before you hash, you need to com convert it, right? We did it this last week. So before you can say, is this equal to this? If not, you know, if this, if this is not, um, if this condition is not met, it's gonna throw an error. Okay, but there's something else you can do here. You can put a comma, okay? And probably tell your user why. You can say you are not allowed to call this function, okay? So that if this requirement is not meant, okay, it's going to display this to the user or to the caller. Um, now, okay, why I showed this example is because um, there is another function or uh, what's called asset. Okay, it does the same thing as require. Okay, but the difference between asset and required is that asset doesn't give you an opportunity to tell the user what he or she, you know, doesn't give any error message. Like we give an error message here. Okay, just asset is it fails, it fails person doesn't need to know why it fails, okay? So 
So at the end of the day, if this, if this, um, if the color puts in vital light, that means it's going to be the same here. Okay. Is the and the vital light will be equal to vital light, right? And then it's going to return high. That's this code is going to run. Let's say the user puts in something like Ben. And if Ben is hash and is um, compared with vital like it's not going to be the same. So it's going to fail. The code is not going to run. Okay, so that's required for you. So in this zombie game, we don't want users to be able to create unlimited zombie in their army by repeating, by repeatedly calling create a random zombie. Okay, it will not make the game not very fun. Okay, so they want to restrict how many zombies you can call. Okay, that's very good. So they just want to, probably they just want to make it if you've already created the zombie, okay? You don't, I mean, that's all. So when you call this function, then um, can you see where mapping comes in? How will they know that the user has already have a zombie? It is through this uh, mapping they've created. You remember they made a zombie, a owner zombie count. So immediately you created a zombie, okay? Somewhere here, it already keeps count that you have one zombie, okay? So now when you want to create a required function, you don't want, you want every, unique wallet, every unique user to, to have just one zombie, okay? So when they call, call the create zombie function, they are restricted because you put it, you, you're gonna put in something called required, okay? And this required is gonna say, oh, go straight, go straight to zombie, yeah, yeah. Go straight to this mapping, okay? Check. Remember, okay, let me get this here so that you see. See what I'm doing better. Um, good. So it's gonna say, you know, th uh, this zombie, you're gonna call it with a key, right? The key is gonna be the, the color. How do you get a color? Message does sender, very good. Message just sender. So message does sender is the, is the color of, is the colors um, Ethereum address or the contract that is calling this. Anybody that is calling this, whether contract or your user, the address is going to be um, and gotten by this global variable message to sender. Okay, so immediately you call this. What is it going to get? It's going to put in one, two, three. So if it is, uh, so you 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 now put in a parameter that says if it is greater than zero. Okay, sorry, if it is greater than one, you get it revert. You get it. So that is, or if it is, what do they require also put here? I think zero will be better. Okay, yeah, they said the same thing. Okay, so let's read. Put a required require statement, okay? At the beginning of create random zombie, the function should check to make sure that the, that the user is equal to zero, okay? That means we have to check if it is equal to zero. And true and error. So I just leave it. Hope we're not missing anything. Okay. Um, by the way, let me remove this. So we want just one color. I mean, if you've called, if you've already created a zombie, you, we don't want you to create another zombie. So how do we know, know and do it? We use a mapping to check how many zombies you have. If, if immediately you call this function, okay, anybody can call the function, but when you call it, there's gonna be a required. This require is gonna check the zombie, uh, owner zombie count map, okay? Keys in this, um, the user address, okay? And check, is it equal to zero? If it is equal to zero, what happens? You can like if if this is met, the code can run. Okay, now if it is equal to zero, it's going to run. Then, but if it is not equal to zero, that is if it is one, two, three, minus one, whatever, is um is going to throw an error. 
So I think that is that. So easy. So um, just like I told you, you can give the, you can tell the user why there is an error, okay? okay. I don't know, I added so many things. I don't know if this is gonna run, okay. I require, you know, this is tricky. When you sh shift the line, sometimes it doesn't run, but we check and see if there's anything we did wrong. Put a require in the beginning of create. I'm done zombie owner. Oh, ship what is it run true? Let's see. Oh, sorry, sorry. I made a port. So, because this is not, um, this is an equality sign. We want to know if it is equal to zero, okay? You're not creating a random, you're not creating a variable. Um, that reminds me. Okay, let's just, let's just review this sign, just like in JavaScript, okay? This sign is actually used to, you're, 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 you're impeding whatever is in here into this variable. But with this, you're trying to compare the two sides. Okay, that's the. Okay, that's the only error we did. Good. Let's move to five. So you see, it's um, getting interesting. You know, we are building something that is um, worthwhile and something that is a real world example. If you have questions, you can drop it on the. Group pen is there to answer. And I also we attend to you. So, so let's quickly see what we've done. Okay, good. So inheritance. Okay. So you might you might decide to divide it into two. Okay, three, four, four, five, depending. Um Let's look into this smart contract. Mm -hmm. I just opened this before. Okay, but when you look at their code, you see that they actually divided it into so many files. Okay, this is admin done. So this is uh, meta, blah, blah, blah. So the SOL, okay. So SOL is just solidity. So they divided it up. And what they did is that they, try to link each each of them. Um, good example is this, sorry. Yeah, you can see this smart contract is actually pointing to this other previous one. So what they did is that they imported this, they imported the admin.sol, okay? And they inherited this. They inherited the admin, let me go back. So this is, one part of the smart contract, okay? Now, they made another contract, okay, here, and they imported the admin don't so, okay? And they inherited what server is in the admin don't so can now be seen in meta transaction receiver. To be clearer, when we go to, when we go back here, so inheritance, what does inheritance does? It kind of makes us to, you know, inherit whatever, you know, divide up our smart contract and still, you know, link them up together. Mm. So in this very example, they made a contract called Dodge, okay? And then they made a second one called Baby Dodge. And they said Baby Dodge is Dodge. So it means Baby Dodge inherits all the function in, in Dodge. Um, next time we're going to use Solidity um, Remix, and that way you're going to see how it really inherits everything. You're going to see that all the functions, just by using is Dodge, all the functions available in Dodge can be called in BB Dodge. It's just as if you copied this, okay, whatever is in Dodge into BB Dodge. So that is the power of inheritance, and it's very easy 
just use the is statement uh, keyword, okay? But first of all, in, import it, okay? Import the file and then use the is statement. So why do you need to import a file? Let's say um, in this very smart contract, okay, we can actually start another smart contract here. Yes, it's possible, you know, and some other codes you, you will see it, but some people prefer to keep it cleaner by making a separate file for, for those um, smart contracts. So if you're making a separate file, you mean you need to import it, okay? But if you're not making a separate file, you don't need to import it. You just can just create another one here. I think that's what they want us to do, okay? They want us to implementing, okay, they want us to create, sorry. And then we're going to implement the functionality for, okay? Let's put this logic into, okay. They want to improve the functionality of the this smart contract we're doing in the sense that our zombie can feed on other zombies, okay? When they feed on other zombies, you know, when zombie feeds on another zombie, another, a new set of zombies born, that's and genes are mixed up and we're gonna do it. And we're gonna have a new zombie. This is so interesting. So they want us to make a contract called zombie feeding. They want to make another contract, you know, they don't want to model anything up. They just want to make another contract. So how do you make a contract? Just like you've done here, okay? You just use a keyword contract. So you don't need to put any pragma because you're still on the same file, okay? So contract, the name of the contract and this, that's all. Very good, you've created a, a contract. How big this contract is empty, okay? How big this contract is empty? So, check. Oh, what did we do again? Sometimes if you don't place this where it should be, it's gonna yell at you. Feed in. Okay. Okay, they say it should inherit, sorry, I missed it. The contract should inherit from our zombie factory. So how does it inherit? You use the is statement. So this is very powerful. Just using this is keyword, sorry. You're gonna see that it's just like you've copied everything inside here, okay? Into everything inside here into this smart contract. Okay, so that is just there. So you can call, even though this contract may look empty, you can actually call every function in Zombie, in Zombie factory, in Zombie feeding because it's already inherited. Mm, but sometimes you might want to make your code cleaner by separating this into files. Okay, that's what they did here, very nice. Okay, they separated it. So you see, they've cleaned up this code, okay? And um, they made a separate, this is the zombie factory. What we did, they've deleted it and they made a separate file called zombiefeeding.sol. SOL means solidity, you know? That's the file extension. So, but now, though we, Though we've inherited zombie factory, okay? Our code can't really find it because it's not here. It's not presently, presently. So you need to first import, okay? Just, this is um, a normal thing, just like in JavaScript, you can import using the import keyword. And then if it is in the same folder, okay? You can use the dot, is this a folder backslash? And then you state the name of the contract, okay? so. A good example is this, this smart contract is, they created a new smart contract called new contract. New contract is going to inherit some other contract. That's another contract they, um, that may, may, or may not be on the same file, okay? But here we see that it's not really on the same file because they imported the small, some other contract, okay? And this also gives, gives, tells us where it is, where, where is a small, I mean, some other contract. 
So under contract is on the same folder with new contract. So that's why they use the dot for slash. Um, so let's do, do it. We, we can see our stuff is still on the same folder so we can do same. Let's try to import. Remember, we need to import it because they are, it, and they are not in the same file. Okay, we need to import this file before we can be able to inherit it. Import. Since they're on the same folder, we use this. Okay, so if, if you want to locate it somewhere else in your local drive or blah, 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 you can, you know what to do. Can you see blah, 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 blah. Depending on the, on if, you are working on drive C, D, E, F, G, F, and the rest of it. So yeah, we go. What contract do we want to import? We want to import this. Can you see? We're importing this. This zombie file or so. So let's type it in. Zombie factory. Sorry. So uh, that's all. Always remember. Yeah, semicolon. Um. So what we are doing now is very, what we are about to do now is very interesting because we want to make our zombie feed another zombie and then we get a new zombie, okay? So we're going to be creating the function now. But before then, let's uh, go back to storage and uh, memory, okay? You remember? Huh? Okay, yeah. Remember for storage and memory, whenever we, oh, I forgot to tell you, there's something called like reference, um, how, how did this reference reference kind of um, reference uh, reference type okay just like this type is a unit um, type okay we have what they call the reference type so it includes strings i mean string um it includes um stroid mapping etc so whenever you want to use them in a function you really need to state if you want you want them to be in memory or if you want them to be on storage you know memory here actually means you want them to be temporal you know when you call a function okay and after that they should disappear but when you use storage it means you they should persist on the blockchain now where do we need this we you you might um up to now you you've only we've already we only use that of string okay but you know whenever you are creating a function and you're calling function um, you are using something like stroids array okay inside a function you really need to state if it is going to be on memory or on the like memory that's it's going to after the function it ever for or you're going to store it so it's like a kind of a requirement let's take a quick look at this contract this contract has a stroid sandwich okay and sandwich has two properties, name and status. All of them are of type string. And then they created this, an array of sandwich stroid, okay, called sandwiches, okay? So it kind of takes record of all the sandwiches, all the sandwich that was made. So when you call this function, we're here. When you call this function, each sandwich, we know we can call it because it's a public of public visibility. And it's going to, when you call it with an index, it's going to, what is it going to do here? Okay, it's going to create a variable per se, okay? It's, it's, it's going to initiate um, this, my sandwich, and this sandwich is, is going to be like a pointer to this. It's kind of, it's kind of, no, no, it's kind of hard to understand, but when you start doing it in practice, you see that you may, you don't really need to add all this, all this stuff, but let's understand it first. Let's read it. So you should declare with the storage keyword, okay? And then like here, in which my sandwich is a pointer to the sandwich index in storage, okay? So here yeah, you're creating, you're creating a variable, okay? This variable is of type what? Sandwich, that is a stroid, 
and it's pointing to to this is and is pointing to an index of of this um, array so but um so now you can actually call one of the properties of the sandwich okay by using my sandwich dot status when when you do this what happens it's going to go here and just pick you know it's going to go to whatever number if it is zero okay it goes to um it searches the the array okay goes to in the index zero okay and what what is in this um array you actually store it stored strides okay and this stride have two properties name and status so when it goes to into zero whatever stride that is there is going to here we are here now it's going to get out the status property okay and and that's just that and there's another one you can use memory memory means um it just evaporates there you know nothing really happens so um here they said if you want to if you want if you just want a copy you can use memory so if you want a pointer you use storage and when you want a copy you use um memory okay it's it's not very hard when we start doing it you you understand it better um so let's see what they want us to do you know practice is better so that we, we you get you understand it better probably i didn't explain it well um so this time will give our zombies the ability to feed and multiply. So what do they feed? They feed on other zombies, okay? So when a zombie feeds on some other life form, its DNA will combine with other DNA and create a new zombie, okay? So now let's create a zombie, sorry, a function called feed and multiply. So what this feed and multiply does is that it, a zombie feeds in another zombie and then a new zombie is created. That, that's interesting. So. They are supposed to give us a, usually they tell us where to type distance. Okay, here. And the new contract we created. So let me go first now, function, let's create a function. Let's say, let's create a function called what? Multiply, multiply and feed. What does this function take? It takes in two parameters. They are all units, okay? And let me give this to you. Okay, the first one takes in this parameter. And if this one, it's the second parameter, this. And um, so is this the visibility? Is it public? Yes. Is it going to return any value? They didn't say that. So we go straight and we use this. Okay, so you've created a function. What is this function going to do? Um, we do not want to let someone else feed our zombie. So let's make a requirement. Okay, so you know because this is public, anybody can call this function. Okay, so you want to make sure that whoever calls this function has a zombie. You know this is. You want to make sure that anybody that calls this function has a zombie, so you can require, or has a zombie and is actually calling on his zombie. You know, is the user um. The zombie ID he or she impute is going to be his own zombie. Okay. So, require what did I say? Let's make sure we own the zombie. Had a require statement to verify that message or sender is equal to this zombie's owner. Okay. Okay. Because of this primitive confess, we make it very good. Okay, so this message just send it. We go to zombies owner. How do we know the zombies owner? How do we know the zombies owner here? Okay, we know the zombie. Remember, we made a map. So actually. Because this inherited inherits this, it's just like everything here is like invisibly inside this contract. So let, let me get this so that it will be clear. Uh, 
I mean, this, this, this will be what we're gonna call, okay? Let me get this out so that we we'll we'll see what we're doing. We have a few minutes to go. Okay, so who is gonna tell me what we're gonna do? First of all, we are gonna query this. We're gonna query this uh, map, okay? We're gonna key in the message to send. Okay, we're gonna key in this zombie ID. So what are you saying now? You're trying to say require, you're trying to make a require statement. First of all, when, when this function is called, okay, there's going to be a require statement that we say if this code is going to run. And what is that require statement? You want to know if this, because um, the caller is going to put in two variables. I mean, there are two parameters, okay? One is going to be zombie ID. You want to know if this zombie ID belongs to the caller, okay? Now, what do you do? you refer back to the map. Remember we made a map called zombie to owner. For every zombie and its ID, we we linked, we kind of stored it, okay? To be able to show us the owner. Let's say zombie with ID three. Okay, we know every zombie by its ID. Zombie ID three is, um, is keyed into this um, zombie to dot, uh, sorry, zombie to owner uh, map. Okay, so that the value we give of the owner, that's the address. So let's say if we call only this, okay, it's going to give us the owner of this zombie. That's whatever, if it is three, four, five, six, whatever ID is used here, okay, it's going to return the owner. Then it's going to match. Is this equals to is this is, is this um, equal to message the sender, okay? Then you know that comparison we is going to say if it's if it is yes, the code is going to run. If it is no, it's not going to run. It's going to throw an error, okay? You can decide to help the user, you remember, by using a comma and writing whatever you want to write, but they didn't ask us to do that. Um, so, I think that's okay. Oh, they want us to do something else. Oh, we are going to need to get this zombies DNA. So the next thing, our function should do is to create a zo local zombie named my zombie, okay? Which will be a storage pointer. Uh, we don't have time. This would have been very nice to delve into how to call this function. Start here. Okay, the next thing was to make a zombie. Create a local zombie, okay? Creating a local zombie named my zombie, my zombie. Okay, and it's going to be like a pointer, so it's going to be storage. I'm going to explain this now. Is um, set this variable to be equal to to index zombie ID in our zombie array. Okay. Okay, so so what we just did now is that we created a pointer, okay, to this zombie. I mean, to this zombie array, okay. Like, okay, you know what this does, right? This is going to take the index of whatever zombie and it's going to call the zombie and you already know that it's going to be a stroid right because this zombie stores in stroids and then it's going to create a pointer my zombie my zombie pointer mm, if we delve deep i can give you some other alternative that will make you to understand this very code and and not make it um, look difficult but let me destroy it here let me separate it so this is actually gonna give you back a stroid right remember this is this is zombies array is querying whatever you're going to use maybe in this one two three four five depending on the id of the zombie okay then it's going to return it so you want to 
make my zombie, okay? You're gonna make um, um, a local zombie, that's my zombie, to just point at this. That means we, we, we use this code for some other thing. And when we use it, you understand it better. And I will give you a simpler version of it. And so I, I want you to know why we use this keyword. Actually, this is gonna return a straight, right? I mean, why we use this type? This is gonna return a straight. Invariably, this is gonna be a straight. So remember, zombie straight. This straight is a zombie straight. We created it here. We created it here, okay? So that's good. So you know why we used what we used. Um, I think um, we're gonna, I don't know if I scattered so many. You should have four lines of code so far, including the close bracket. And this is gonna, okay, let's, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, Let's just revise what we did. And that's, and then we'll call it a day. This is actually very interesting, but since we don't have time. So what, what did we do? We try to create a map, okay? A key value um, storage kind of system, okay? Where you put in a key and it gives you the value, okay? So we made is a map called zombie to owner. So whenever it's a, 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 a color creates a zombie, we get, we um, identify the zombie with an ID, right? We did it the other day. Then we try to key it into this map, okay? And make it point to message of sender. That means, you know, we key in this zombie into this zombie.owner so that whenever we call it, it gives us the owner of the zombie, okay? This is what we did. And then we created another map called owner zombie count. That means it keeps count of how many zombies an owner has, okay? So that whenever you create a zombie, it's going to keep on adding, incrementing your zombie by one, okay? Then, what else did we do? Uh, we saw how to, you know, make um, contracts. You know, you can divide up contract by creating contracts on contracts, okay? So, um, and then you can actually inherit from another contract by using the is keyword, okay? Um, which we did we did here. So this zombie feeding is zombie factory. It's more or less trying to copy everything here and pasting it into this. Next time we're going to see what it what this really means in practice. We're going to use um, remix, and you're going to see when we when we compile this, you're going to see all the functions on. Zombie factory will be available on zombie feeding. It's like magic just by using this keyword. But remember, this zombie factory is not in this file. Okay. So we need to import it first. We import it. So importing this statement is like copying what is whatever is in here and pasting it here. Okay. More or less. And then what um what else did we do? we decided to, we saw how to use the require statement, okay? To kind of modify who calls our function, okay? And um, a very good example is here. We want feed and multiply, okay? Anybody can put in any zombie ID, but we want to know if the caller is really the owner. How do we know? We've already, way back, we've already made a map, okay? Where we put in um, a map called zombie.owner, where the owner, um, is used a key. I mean, uh, the zombie ID is used as a key to get the owner. Okay. So when we, this very function here is going to return the owner of this um, of this zombie. That's of this uh, zombie with zombie ID, whatever it is. Okay. And then it's going to match it and say, is it equal to message just sender? Message just sender is a global variable. Okay. That gives us the address of the color, the color, the color of this con, uh, uh, function or, yeah, can be, it can be a user like you and I, it can be a contract, okay? So that being said, um, so next time we see how to, how to finish up this code, you know, how to make some other logic that is very interesting. I think by lesson two, most of the fundamentals, that's next week, most of the fundamentals must have been dealt with.
So I encourage you to practice at home. You know, just get, get back to these things. You know, I didn't really read everything. Read it, listen to what we did, read it, and you're gonna understand it. And I'm, I'm very, I'm, uh, yes, I didn't really explain this very well, okay? But I wish we, we wrote more code so that you can really understand why, this is just trying to point to this so that let's say you wanna, you wanna get, one minute. Let's say you, my zombie is like a local um, storage, okay? I mean, local variable pointing at this, okay? So let's say you wanna just get one of the properties. You wanna get the name or the DNA. You know, okay, what we wanna do is that we wanna feed zombie with zombie. So probably what they are gonna do is they're gonna get the DNA, okay, of this very zombie. So you see, it's gonna be easy for us to just do my storage or DNA. So my storage or DNA here, is gonna, oh, sorry, my zombie, my zombie. That's this, my zombie, you know? This is like pointing to this, okay? This is pointing to this. So it's gonna help us to like get the query destroyed and get the property DNA, you see? So in other words, we can actually, you know, instead of writing this long code, we can actually do something like this, dot DNA. <laughs> so this in essence is the same thing as writing this, that, you know. Um, so, I mean, when we write for the codes, you're gonna see why they need to um, put a pointer because sometimes you might need to reference this a lot. So you just put a pointer to it. Remember when you're putting a pointer, because it's a, um, um, a type, um, a reference type kind of um, um, storage data. You need to say if it is a, if it is going to be stored on the storage or memory. When you make it as a storage, it's just like a pointer. When you make it as a memory, it's just like a local copy. You know, just like a copy. So that's all we can take for this time. So happy you guys are here. So just more practice, just read everything that is here. Try to code it so easy. This is the easiest stuff you can think of. And it's gonna make sense, you know, when we start building these things, you know, you, I mean, by the time we finish lesson two, we can look at the codes and you see how everything actually um, forms as a whole. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, our Discord is always available for you. Okay, Ben. Hey. Thanks again, Akoya. Really good, informative lesson. Really appreciate everybody sticking through this. And uh, we've got a lot, number of people that couldn't be here today that are joining in via YouTube. So thanks again, everybody, for watching the YouTube recordings too. Um, feel free to ask any questions as they're saying in the Discord. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the conversation going there. But uh, generative NFTs, still quite <laughs> um, a topic. Uh, you know, this, this exercise has been out here for a while, um, but it's, it's something that I think is a really good example. So keep, keep trying to go through these scenarios and learn it. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording.